Now, there has been concerns that the United Nations and some of these multilateral organizations have not lived up to expectations and lived up to their founding principles. Do you share the same sentiment? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I do share the same sentiments. And um, in fact, uh, before I commence with anything, it is it is uh, very important for one to note, you know, if one looks at the speeches by African presidents that spoke at the General Assembly, um, one notes that um, there is solidarity in terms and there is one voice in terms of uh, African countries calling for reforms, you know, calling for reforms in institutions, calling for reforms in these um, uh, global forums, you know. Um, I mean, South Africa's president spoke on the same lines like uh, Malawi's president, like Nigeria's president, you know. And there is that there is that unity that despite the differences that we're facing in the continent, there is a call now that, uh, you know, these global institutions should take the African continent very serious. Um, uh, this is not uh, the begin. This is not the first time that it has been said. Here, the BRIC summit in Johannesburg, uh, the same was highlighted by African countries that were here, saying that you know what, we need our global, we need Africa's voice to be heard. We need an equal playing uh, uh, level, you know, uh, on these multilateral institutions. And here in South Africa, during that BRICS summit, uh, China did make a commitment with other partners that they will continue for Africa's voice on the, uh, on the global stage and reforms. But surprisingly, you, you hear, and for me, one of the biggest issues was, um, you know, four major countries not appearing. France, number one, and not appearing um, uh, 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 at, the, at, the, at the UN uh, General Assembly, citing a heavy diplomatic uh, schedule that he had to meet with King Charles, he had to meet with the Pope, he had to meet with um, uh, the UK's opposition leader. Then you have you have then the British Prime Minister Richie Sunak not appearing. He has never appeared at the General Assembly since his election in October. Um, I think he stayed behind because he faced a lot of domestic issues and um, he thought it was best for him to remain in Britain and try to address those issues, um, especially those domestic issues that he is facing in his party. Then you have uh, the Chinese president, obviously, who has not appeared um, at the General Assembly. Also, he said he was not going to come. He was going to send the, the, uh, his uh, vice uh, to the to the United Nations General Assembly, so we have we have um, these you know challenges that are, are are coming and you know and the theme of 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 this of this of this United the past United Nations General Assembly was very clear you know uh, it was about trust it was about solidarity but how do you build solidarity how do you build trust when these important leaders. Okay, so-called important leaders are not there, you know. Um, it would have been nice to see France um, at this meeting, given the situation that is happening in West Africa currently, you know, um, for him to meet with African counterparts and be able to answer their questions about our French influence in, in, in Francophone uh, 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 Africa, you know. Yes. So such things has delayed that. I don't think there's trust that has been built after this General Assembly. I mean, Biden had no, he was in, he's in America, the UN General Assembly is in America, he had no choice but not to miss it. Um, but um, I just think that uh, it's now time and as the years go by, African countries are united in one thing and it's they need a place. They need a place in the United Nations Security Council with veto powers and they're not negotiating that. When is, when that, when when is that when is that going to come into play? We don't know, but we are seeing that these grain calls um, are not to be downplayed because with the geopolitical restructuring that's happening in the world, one does not need to underplay Africa's voice in terms of calling for a seat at the United Nations Security Council.